Our next historic woman is Nicaraguan revolutionary Doris Tijerino. Born in 1943, Tijerino was a key figure of the Sandinistas, or the Sandinista National Liberation Front, known as FSLN, a revolutionary group that in 1979 overthrew a 46-year dictatorship in Nicaragua. The mother of a young boy, this courageous activist frequently risked her life and spent more than two years behind bars. Defiantly defending the safe house of an FSLN directorate, she was captured and subsequently tortured by the National Guard. She was later freed in an FSLN raid. After the revolution, she became the head of police, the only woman in the world at that time to be in charge of a national police force. Here to deliver an excerpt from her 1978 autobiographical, autobiographical text, Inside the Nicaraguan Revolution, published just one year before overthrowing the dictatorship, is Elida Joyce, a third year student at Hampshire College and a leader of the school's chapter of Students Against Mass Incarceration. Her academic focus is on analyzing race, gender, and sexuality politics in a global context and sneaking in and astronomy, astronomy courses where she can. She is currently working as a graphic designer for the Prison Policy Initiative, helping them with illustrations about prison gerrymandering and sentencing enhancement zone projects. Ladies and gentlemen, Elida Joyce as Doris Tijerino. If we say something about the women who were in jail with me, the regular prisoners, you get some idea of the true condition of the Nicaraguan peasant and the proletariat women exploited by the country's ruling class and by imperialism. Most of the prisoners in with me were peasant stock. Some were city women who had been workers and had for various reasons gone into prostitution or thievery. It was customary for the dealers in charge of supplying the brothels with women to go into the countryside to the mountainous region where the population suffers from hunger and recruit women supposedly to do housework in the city. These people use this cover to recruit young peasant girls, daughters of brewing peasants or of agricultural pro pro proletariats who are brought to the city and taken directly to whorehouses. They are forced to participate in that life. They have no right to payment. These newcomers arrive without clothes or shoes and are paid with used clothing. They have no right to leave the brothel, nor even go near the front door. These girls suffer bestial treatments. If they escape, they are easily caught. They are peasants. They don't know the city. They don't know how to work. They are easily located and taken prisoner. The madams of this house carry on their businesses together with the guard and the commanders of the barracks and jails. Madams go to the jails very often, pick out the youngest and the prettiest girls, and they pay their fines with the understanding that they have to go and work in the bars they own. This is a vicious circle. Nicaragua is a country in crisis, not only economically, but also politically. The crisis grows worse and worse. North America, imperialism on its part carries out a clear-cut policy which up to now has been one of the definite supporters of the Somoza dictatorship. You can be sure of this. Imperialism is for the Somoza dictatorship because it guarantees the survival of the system, guarantees North American interests in this country. Bearing this situation in mind, the FSLN is planning a long struggle, a prolonged popular war. The length of this war isn't a question to be determined by anybody's desire. It depends on internal conditions and a great measure on the relation of forces in the international community. Right now, imperialism has another face, the face of the aggressor in Vietnam, of the kidnapper of Vietnamese children, of the CIA that carries out its actions everywhere, of a decadent monster in a serious economic and moral crisis. The FSLN needs international solidarity to strike and isolate the dictatorship. We are taking charge of dealing in a blow from the inside. We've shown our ability to do that. I'm convinced that with the continuation of this repressive policy, the only thing they'll accomplish is to increase the discontent radicalize the people more and more, including the most honest, most progressive sectors of the bourgeoisie. 
They can even intervene directly by way of Condeca or with its army, and we won't be annihilated. The people of Nicaragua recognize the Sandinist Front as their vanguard, and because Nicaraguan people have demonstrated that imperialism can be defeated in Nicaragua. At present, the Sandinist Front is determined to consolidate militarily. We'll create a popular army, an army capable of confronting any enemy in the future, any interventionalist force. We have a revolutionary movement that relies on a unified leadership, a leadership that has known how to confront its own internal problems, bearing in mind that unity is a determining factor in carrying that struggle forward. Besides, and this is a very important point, we are a growing revolutionary movement, a rising movement, one that hasn't been possible to destroy, one that after each surge of repression has come out stronger, purifying itself along the way without dividing into splinter groups. When a revolutionary movement is powerful, it can rise up again when it is struck down. In Nicaragua, our yearnings for freedom are very great. The people have suffered too much. We'll keep on struggling, so someday all our people will dream in color.